Okay, so these labels so were these labels were soaked, have been pulled off. And then you dried them, you flattened them between a couple of pieces of wood. Uh-huh. And, uh, so actually I have found a couple of older ones, too, that I'm going to try to flip. This we have Zombie Killer by uh, Bee Nectar. Had it. Delicious. Okay, excellent. And this just gets put on my spray board. And then my good friends over at Goose Island hooked me up with a whole bunch of the bourbon Oh, uh, look at that. And so I uh, don't have to pull these off the bottles anymore, but They're I still do every once in a while. Pristine shape. Right, and um, these are widely, widely popular, so I really love having these. Right. And then as the tiles come in, the tiles have white sides on them, and so I actually sit down with an oil base marker and color the sides of the mm. tile. Um, I think it frames them out and they look nicer than just a plain, you know, tile. Because um, it's like unfinished, sort it's of unfinished, green. It's unfinished, right, right. And, you know, people still buy them either way, but I like the, the visual effect. Mm. Even though it takes me forever to paint the tiles, <laughs> uh, I, I'm willing to do that just to... Just to you know, For your art! So, we have an industrial adhesive. Mm -hmm. And we have the blank dry label. And then what I'm going to do is... Now, if you uh, were to stick this directly onto the tile right now, mm -hmm. uh, it would slide right off. It oh. adhere. So we're going to let it dry for just a second. And while that happens, I reach over and I grab some of these stickers that our good friends over at Revolution hooked me up with. And we'll clean it out in there. <laughs> so we have some Revolution Brewery labels. We'll Looks like now. fourth year beer there. Yeah, exactly. Fourth year. Let me get a little closer. Okay, let's see what I'm okay, so we'll going to do is I'm going to line that up the center. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, so now I'm going to smooth it out, completely take all the air bubbles out of it, and make sure it's nicely adhered to the surface. And then the most scientific of all my tools, a CD case. <laughs> and what I do is I have busted off one of the, uh, the tabs, uh -huh. and once I align it, it uh, it's perfect. Rubber cement pickup uh -huh. to pull any additional glue. And a little Windex on it. I don't think this is way smoother than no one's watching me. <laughs> a little bit of Windex on there always helps take off and be. So they had extra labels because this is a limited run and they just printed too many? or uh, Yeah, and also, you know, the guys really like what I do over there. So oh, cool. when I called them up, I'm like, oh, man, you know, I sold all the Revolution. And you know, they're always like, hey, come over, you know. Right. And um, only if they printed Anti-Hero. <laughs> yeah, those are all. Uh, yeah, those are nice. Everyone's always asking me, oh, do you have any Anti-Hero? I'd buy like 50 of those if you have them. Oh, thanks. Okay, so now these have dried a little. Mm -hmm. So we're basically going to do the same thing. I'm gonna take it. So you're just making you're making your own stickers. Basically, yes. So when you said if you put it right on, it, it would slide right off. It's right, right, right. Because so what happens is the 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 glue needs to dry just ever so slightly. Up, set up a little bit. Right. So now, as you can see, it's 
sticking nice. And, and plastic, plastic-based uh, labels tend to be the hardest mm -hmm. because uh, no matter how much glue you put on them, they curl. <laughs> and so I would say for about every ten that I do, I get about a twenty percent failure. <laughs> remove any of the uh, things may have left over from okay and there we have another one very nice couple out now the biggest trick is that um, I like to have a variety but everyone wants three Floyds everyone wants revolution everyone wants Loganitas. Um and then I, what's funny is, for the longest time, I never made Budweiser, I never made Miller Lite or Corona, or not Corona, but um, Coors. And here recently, I just thought, well, I'm going to do it just to see if they sell, and they do. Yes. I, I mean, the crazy amounts of Budweiser ones and Miller Lite ones. And I always get people that don't buy them right away. They always come back when I'm like at a low point, <laughs> and then they buy like five of them real quick. <laughs> like they don't want the other beer snobs to see them. <laughs> My uncle drinks this. It's like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> and they sell a billion bottles of that a year, and your uncle's not the only one drinking it. So do you do anything to kind of dress these up when you've got some sort of, like, awkward crops like that where, you know, you're cutting through text and that kind of thing? You know, I, I, at first I was always worried about that because it's like, oh, someone's going to want to read it, but it never, it never occurs to anybody. Like, right. you know, oh, there's text in there, and, you know. As you can see, that's the, you know, I cut right through the pipeline. And I would love to have, you know, some labels are, are they fit directly on the 4x4. Four four, okay. And I get them, and um, they're great. And then there's other ones that, um, so like, here's a, good, here's a good example is, this is a St. Bernardus, which is a very popular. Now, what's too bad about the St. Bernardus is they had painted bottles for the longest time. And they made the perfect goblets and, and glassware, and then they moved over to paper labels. They're a bunch of cheap bastards. <laughs> Those cheap mugs. Yeah. And then here's the last one. We did the bourbon counties. So this is the coffee stout, which I cannot believe that's so popular right now. You know, I just need beer and my coffee and coffee and my beer. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand like chocolate and things like that, but like coffee. Or beer. So there it is. That is a uh, that center is very nice though. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then we take those. Now normally I would do uh anywhere from fifty to a hundred of these. Oh wow. Know. Now, before, I used to lay them all out first and then try to paint them, mm. and they would shift and move, and it took me about 40% um, about more epoxy to do it that way, and I found out if I buttered them right above the container, anything that I had excess would just drip back into the container. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got those laid out. On the bed of nails. On the bed of nails. <coughs> One second. Now this epoxy is thermal reactive, which means that with the application of heat, it displaces the oxygen from the surface. Oh. So all those little tiny bubbles. <coughs> now this. Get that 
gorgeous clear coat on them now. Nice. That's probably not going to make that up. And then I just go back through and check and make sure that I got it complete. So, so you, you can see I got just a little bit of areas that didn't quite get coated. So I'll go back. Very scientific drizzle. Yeah. <laughs> I actually just ordered a whole bunch of bracelet molds, so when I have extra epoxy, I can start producing another item. So this isn't drying them in any way, this is just no, getting no, rid no, of the bubbles. No, 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 it takes 24 hours to 